Hey, welcome to your I3 home groups. Uh, each of these weeks that we meet in the homes, we're going to continue studying through the same thing that was introduced at the gathering. And as we do this, we'll open up with a video that will not only introduce the topic, but will give you key points to focus on as you continue in your conversation and your study as a group. So, today we're going to continue looking at the book of Philippians. Last week we talked about joy. We talked about the ways that God gives us joy. We talked about the ways that the fruit of the Spirit show that it is not us that produce joy, but it is God's work, the Holy Spirit's work within us that produces that joy. Today we're going to continue in light of that on to Philippians 2. And those of you who have heard me talk about Philippians 2 before know that I hold this as a manifesto for what it means to be a Christian. I hold this very dearly, these, these scriptures, because... Particularly, they speak to what it means to be a leader within the Christian community and to be a leader within this world. So, hear these words from Philippians 2. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort in love, any sharing in the Spirit, any sympathy, complete my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, being united and agreeing with each other, don't do anything for selfish, selfish purposes, but with humility, think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for that which is better for others, and adopt the attitude that was of Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form God, he did not consider being equal with God something to exploit. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and by becoming like human beings. When he found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names, so that at the name of Jesus everyone in heaven and on earth and under the earth might bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I love this scripture. Because it opens up saying, hey, if you have any encouragement from being a follower of Christ, if you've gained anything from being a part of a loving community, then make my joy complete. Or not by getting more, not by attending an event more, but by giving of yourself. And I think that this is the key part to what it means to be a Christian in a world that tells us to continue to grab for ourselves. I love this moment uh, because of that, but I also love it because we see the writer seemingly pleading with us to take an attitude of Christ, but that attitude seems to be impossible. And I don't see this scripture as a way that's saying, hey, just pick yourself up by the bootstraps and be like Jesus. Instead, I see Paul writing to people saying that when we are with Christ, when we are in Christ, we may be called to be like Christ. For those of you who have been around for a couple of years, we know that we studied the Heidelberg Catechism a couple of years ago. And if you recall, one of my favorite parts of the Heidelberg is questions four and five. And it's actually part of this is based on the scripture that we got the, the logo I3 from. So... Question four says, what does God's law require of us? And it says, Christ teaches us this in a summary uh, in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, where he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. This is the Shema that we talked about last week. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all of the law and all of the prophets. You see here where Jesus is getting with this. He's saying you must love God first. And the second is you must love your neighbor. You get that as we call ourselves I three, I am third, that we are putting God and others uh, in front of ourselves. But here's where it gets interesting. And I love this part. Question five. Can you live up to all of this perfectly? Answer. No. I have a natural tendency to hate God and my neighbor. I think it's beautiful that the writers of the Heidelberg admit to this natural tendency that perhaps the writer in Philippians is battling with. 
If you have any joy, or if you have any love, any unity, make my joy complete by being like Christ, by putting others in front of yourselves. Surely this writer knew the natural tendency to hate God and to hate neighbor. So with that in mind, when we approach these scriptures that make us cringe because of the difficulty of applying them to our lives, let's view these texts in the euphoria of what God has, is, and will continue to do within us, through us, and often around us, in spite of ourselves. So as we continue in conversations about Philippians 2, I don't want you to view these texts as something that's impossible to attain. I want you to view these texts as, what can God do through me? And perhaps if we invite God to take root in our hearts, perhaps we can see ourselves being transformed into the likeness of Christ by putting others and considering others better than ourselves. Take time to talk about that within your home group this week. And we'll see you next week. As always, I am with you. I am for you.